Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Good morning and welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour and I'm your host, Michelle Beltran. You've scooped out some time today for the Intuitive Hour and I'm sure happy you're back. All right, today's episode is a hot topic and it's inspired, as is often the case, by some listeners. So thank you, Lisa and Stephanie. This is an interesting topic. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This is all about what could be blocking your intuition. All right, so let's first understand that blocks can happen. It's part of your psychic development process. So now that we know that, let's embrace it. We have, in this moment, rendered blocks powerless. The difficulty inherent in blocks is that you may not always know, at least right away, what they are or when they are presenting. So let's now take a look at what some of those blocks could be so you can identify them, right? Once you identify them, you can now make some changes. You realize they're there. You can't shift away from something that isn't serving you if you can't first see it. All right. In that light, let's begin. Chakra and aura energy blocks. Here at the Intuitive Hour, I offer a number of meditations and techniques to allow for good energy flow. Since everything is energy, keeping our energy body in balance is essential. You'll find lots of episodes here at the Intuitive Hour about balancing energy, chakras and auras, aligning energy flow. It's extremely important. If there are energy blocks in these energy centers, your chakras, your auras, this can disturb and even block your intuition and psychic abilities from really flowing and coming forward for you. All right, so be sure to revisit those episodes as you can on energy clearing, energy balancing, meditations around energy alignment. Okay, so moving on, releasing doubt. Doubt about your gifts or ability is actually common, but it can create a block. You know you have allowed in doubt because you feel an emotion or sense of second guessing. Your thinking mind has taken over and worry thoughts have entered. We know what that feels like. You know what worry thoughts and a thinking mind is. Notice that. Notice the second guessing moments. You are most certainly in your thinking mind when you feel this, which is limited, by the way, that thinking mind is limited and bound by time and space. Your psychic gifts are beyond the mind, and they are bigger than you. So pay attention to that feeling or that sense of doubt or second-guessing and release it. All right, a little bit about phobias. Phobias and or extreme particulars, I like to call them, about life come in all different manner of ways. Things you absolutely loathe and don't know why could very well be connected to past lives. 
even past experiences in this life that are still stuck with you and hold a low energy that perhaps you're ready to release. Think for a few moments. Is there something in your life that you just cannot stand, but cannot understand why? Like the smell of a particular odor, a particular food, or even an action of some kind, like not wanting to sit at the dinner table, or having to have your home a certain way. Perhaps you prefer sitting on the floor more than in chairs, Tune into these places in your life. If, for example, fire, large crowds, small spaces, spiders, perhaps there's a desire to hide or a need to hide or even being the center of attention, ask yourself if these things, or perhaps others not mentioned here, create anxiety for you and your life. Then it's time to soothe your soul and let them go. At some point in your past, you suffered a difficult situation or treatment, some event that stuck with you and impacted you. It's time now to let these go. So once again, begin noticing these situations that create anxieties, these particulars, or sometimes called phobias. Notice them so that you can release them. All right, your ego. When you find yourself saying, I need to nail this. I need to get this right. I need to be accurate. That is ego. There is no place for ego in this work of intuitive and psychic development. When you get remotely close to that sense that you need to get it right, again, catch yourself, identify it, and let go. Move then into a space of allowing, meaning relax and let the information come to you. It will, it must. Enjoy the journey. Psychic development should be fun and it is a process and, it, and the process is a gift. Your desire to be right or get images or information is ego and will hinder your connection. Your ego would control your life if it could. So be mindful of self-talk in which you're comparing yourself to others, belittling yourself, worrying too much, needing to compete with others to validate your self-worth. These are all signs that you have lost touch with your intuition. Learn to live in your heart. Meditation absorbs ego right up. Because in meditation, you begin to let deeper awareness of who you really are come forward in this quieted space. Remember that the ego is the mind. The real, true you is of the heart. Your intuition is rooted in the heart, this feeling-based space, not logical thought. So, be in silence as often as you can. Meditate. Life will become effortless as opposed to controlled by the ego. All right, rushing. You are in charge of this work. You are in charge of your intuitive gifts and the development of them. You have time. Your gifts are not 
going to get up and run away from you. Can we just stop and envision that for a moment? I find myself wanting to chuckle a little bit. Your gifts are here. They're going to stay. They're not going to get up and leave and run away. So, trust that the knowing of messages will come at the right time. You know it's the right time because it's happening now. All right. The next block to talk about what could possibly be slowing the development of your gifts could be connected to the fact that you're not grounded. Once again, you might refer to a previous episode here at the Intuitive Hour on the topic of grounding. It's common in any spiritual work and development, as I've mentioned previously, to meditate. That meditation may segue into unique out-of-body experiences. These out-of-body experiences are incredibly insightful, valuable, and useful experiences. However, as they are complete, as they are finished, these out-of-body experiences do come back to your body. Make an agreement with your subconscious that if you're practicing this kind of work or you've just experienced that, astral body traveling, for example, make an agreement you are now going to come back to your physical body. Also, here at the Intuitive Hour, I offer guidance on how to create a separation rose or a clean-out rose, a clean-out process from high energy events or energy work you may be doing with clients or family or friends. Please do refer to that episode. This will support you in coming back into your body as well if you're not grounded. The clean-out rows, the separation rows should be something you do before and after any high vibration energy work, any healing, any intuitive sessions, or even life coaching you might be doing with others. Awakening this inner voice and being good at it also requires that you stay in your body and link with it. After all, our body is our vehicle to receive messages through our clear abilities. Your body is the vehicle, the instrument for you. This is why I often say, and is actually quoted in my book, Take the Leap, a higher power cannot be housed in an unhealthy vessel. So, giving care to our physical body is utmost. Stay in your body rather than floating off out of it. All right, moving on. Your nerves. Damned be those nerves. Pardon the expression. I hope that's okay for everyone to say. This is very important, though. Anxiety, the nerves. There are two kinds of anxiety, everyone. The good and the not so good. The good anxiety actually propels you forward. It's what makes you act. It's what makes you move and do and be, regardless of the presence of that anxiety. It motivates you. We want this good anxiety. It's why, in fact, the athlete on the start line is shaking their leg or their foot, some part of their body in anticipation of the start gun firing off. The not-so-good anxiety is the kind that makes you want to curl up into a little ball and hide in the corner. We want to use your good anxiety at all times, 
and especially in any kind of intuitive or psychic development. You may get nervous or feel some anxiety when you offer readings or healings, particularly at the beginning. You might even feel this anxiety when you're receiving work of this nature. Find a way and or a new perspective that supports you in moving forward in this work. I recommend creating a positive mantra when you have these moments of anxiety to keep you present, to redirect you on the intention and the expectations and the desires you have going forward about your psychic ability. Okay, moving forward now into the next potential block that could be presenting, slowing down your intuitive gifts and the development of them, is fear. All right, so when I talk about fear in this case, let's take your clairsentience, for example. This is the ability to feel things in your body. If you're afraid or have fear that you might feel something scary in your body or painful in your body whenever you use this gift, then you may cause it to become blocked. Sometimes clairvoyance, meaning clear vision, seeing an image, can also create fear. For example, If a person fears they may see something clairvoyantly that might scare them or harm them in some way or that is unwelcome, then this too creates a block. Understand that your clairvoyance and any clairability is a gift from the highest of good and love and light. Also, You might have a belief system that fears the ultimate outcome or what people think of you or that your family or friends won't love you because your intuitive abilities and psychic ability is developing. Oh dear, what will they think of me? This can block you from receiving intuitive guidance and insight. Some of the fear may not even come from this lifetime, but from a time when people who were intuitive were called witches or were tortured and terrible things befell them because of the belief system of that time. The energy of that fear of being harmed because of your intuition and intuitive abilities can still come and be present through generations up to the present moment. Your intuitive gifts are rooted in grace and love, no exceptions. I would ask you to consider writing down a mantra, an intention statement in your journal to remind you that you are opened and you are available for this divine gift and that you want it to grow stronger so that you can help others. All right, negative emotions. This is a biggie. Negative emotions are literally dropping our energy and vibration down. They are dragging us down. They expand and distribute our energy in a chaotic direction. You know this is happening because you just don't feel good. This blocks your intuitive abilities. Giving you a more elaborate example. A very strong emotion that blocks your intuition and psychic development is resenting of others, resentment. If you hold resentment towards someone or towards yourself, 
it's not only that powerful low energy emotion, but you also will gather up, accumulate, right along with it, other energies, grudge energy, anger, hatred, sadness, all those low energies, they accumulate. Collectively, they will pull you down. And they also tend to create a great deal of energy imbalance in your chakras, your auras, your chi centers in your body. Another emotion, a very heavy emotion you want to try to identify as you can is regretting. Sometimes we find ourselves saying, I should do that. I should have done that. I should not do that. I encourage you to not should on yourself. It's very much like regret. Regret energy creates stuck energy, particularly in the past. So you find yourself replaying that situation or event or that moment of regret over and over. This too will pull you away from the present moment. It doesn't allow you to fully enjoy your life and absolutely creates a block to your intuitive development. All right, two more aspects of what could potentially be blocking your intuitive gifts that I'd like to talk about. The next is expectations that you might have. As an intuitive, you may place an expectation on the outcome or the accuracy of a session that you are offering or are receiving. You may have an expectation that you have to be able to see clairvoyantly images that are presenting, when in fact that's not your strongest gift. Rather, it's claircognizance, which means that you just have a gut sense about something and trust that. Think for a moment what expectation you might have of yourself Expectation, when it comes to our intuition and psychic development, it's much like static in a radio. It weakens the radio signal, that signal line. Expectations, or shooting on yourself, as I previously mentioned, they create noise for your intuition which is exactly the reason why you, why you may not fully receive accurate information once you let go of expectations. You're open. You're available to receive the highest vibration and insight possible. So take some time to be with what expectations you might be holding. Identify them and consciously release them. All right, and finally, everyone, the last potential block to your abilities, and this is significant, left brain mind noise. We are humans, after all, and we are programmed to think. This is a good thing. However, It's the extra, unnecessary chattering in our minds and our heads that we can let go of. Before any kind of intuitive development work, learn to quiet your mind. Set the to-dos aside and make an agreement that you say out loud, by the way, 
with your subconscious that you'll put all the necessary and important ongoings aside. They are important after all, but you'll put them aside and you'll come back to it all later. In this way, we do honor our left brain's desire, which is important. We need our left brain, but we allow the right brain to come forward fully and take the lead during this intuitive work. This noise and thoughts of the left brain are blocking. They're blocking you from your intuition and psychic gifts moving forward. So if you'll take just five minutes a day in meditation to be thoughtless, this will calm and quiet the chaos of the chatter. As a reminder, we need our left brain. It's not our enemy. It helps us make sense of our work and our world. It's great for validation, organization, planning, and survival of the human race. But it has a limitation. Initially, in any psychic or intuitive work, it really is beneficial to you to be out of that thinking mind, even though you're trained to do so, even though it can be helpful at times. In this intuitive work, thinking too much can be released. All right, everyone, as we begin to wind down the episode today, I want to just give you three tips to release all these blocks. We've identified them, and we've talked a little bit after each about what to do to release them, but here are some specific steps that you can take to release these blocks. First is the prayer of protection. Develop a prayer. Take some time with this. Say it out loud before and after energy work, or as you start and end your day. This prayer will root its power into your subconscious and send the clear message to the universe of your intention for safe, protected, unblocked sessions. It is ever so important for it to be present before energy work, spiritual healings, readings, or even meditation. A protection prayer is not in place for fear that low vibration energies are a threat or will somehow invade your meditative or reading space. That's not why we do this. Rather, this is a tool to maintain healthy energy boundaries. It is a positive thing. It is designed to keep your energy within your own space and other energies within their space. The prayer is a manifestation tool rooted in ultimate love and grace, wrapping you in pure positive essence of goodness and safety. Take some time today to develop your own prayer. You may find yourself editing your prayer for a few days as the depth of it fully expresses. And in time, you may find a place of knowing that you are complete with your prayer. Be sure to state it before readings, meditation, or just whenever feels right to you. All right, the next tool to help you release these blocks, create a protection rose. As I mentioned a few moments ago, your pure positive essence is the only energy allowed in your space. In addition to your prayer of protection, a protection rose is another energy tool that assists you during your daily life, meditation, or any kind of spiritual or psychic development work. A protection rose acts like a filter or a receptacle that absorbs energy near or around you, that is not your own and does not belong in your space. A protection rose can also serve as a hello of sorts, I like to call it. For example, 
during my day, when the thought of my protection rose comes to me, it is a clue to me to be aware. In these moments, I ground myself. I make a conscious choice to become present in the moment, not distracted by my thinking mind. I see that protection rose out in front of me. I envision it. And I become more aware and in tune to the events and occurrences around me. My protection rose in that moment is giving me a gentle reminder to be mindful of healthy energy boundaries coming in and going out. In that moment, it has come to mind. All right. I do recommend that you revisit the episode here on the Intuitive Hour regarding creating a protection rose. There is actually a meditation and a several-step process in creating this protection rose that you can revisit if you'd like some support in creating that for yourself in your work. And finally, the power of visualizing. I want to encourage you to consider imagining a giant syringe or needle. Imagine that out in front of you right now. I've taught this on previous episodes, but I want to take a moment to revisit it. This tool is offered also in the low energy releasing uh, episode here at the Intuitive Hour, how to release low energy vibrations. In any event, again, picture the syringe out in front of you. Imagine it clearly. Picture the syringe filling up with golden divine light. Whatever the low energy is, the block, imagine that also out in front of you. It might just be a color. Whatever that block is, give it an image. See that also out in front of you. This golden divine light inside this syringe. Inject this divine brilliant light. Inject it with the needle going into this blocked energy. See that happening now. Usually, the block will disappear immediately. If you have a strong-willed block, it might linger. Repeat this process. Again, imagining the enormous needle filled with golden divine energy entering that block, that image you've created of it, and slowly squeezing the golden divine light into it. You're not creating harm. You're just sending this block, this energy, this useless energy you've outgrown, you're just sending it away where it needs to go. It has no place here anymore. And watch as the golden divine light completely engulfs the block from head to toe, from top to bottom, That block is at peace now and returning to the place it came from. All right, everyone, as we come to a close, just some final words on some homework you might consider this week. Create a few techniques of your own using your imagination on how you want to release blocks or low energies that no longer serve you. I've mentioned these three here today, but something might resonate with you. I want to encourage you to visit that. Spend five minutes using your new technique to release the block. You'll notice, you'll feel you have succeeded by a sense that your third eye is clear. 
you might feel a newfound strength or emotion or energy of being able to release blocks yourself anytime you want. This will serve as a validation to you that you can, in fact, on your own, with your own techniques, release blocks from yourself and others at any point you choose. All right, everyone, with that, we will bring this wonderful episode to a close. Have a fantastic rest of your week. I look forward to meeting with you all next week. Kick off the new year with 25% off a 30-minute session with Michelle. Visit michellebeltran.com and click on Sessions. Then use the coupon code INTUITIVEHOUR25 when you check out. This special offer is available for a limited time. Book your session with Michelle today at michellebeltran.com.